We are on KICK.com. We are live, but by the time you see this, it'll be Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. This is Friday night, 1 a.m. type vibes for the UK. It's 1 a.m. out there, right, chat? I think it's 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Um, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Damn, 240? Let's continue to go to family from Chicago to the UK. Um, this right here will be any of the highlights from the live if you miss them. Uh, we also got Patreon. Damn, I didn't want to do that, but you know, it is what it is. This, we got Patreon as well. This is a current list of everything that's on there. Um, boom. I'm going to exit out that and come back in later. Pause. <laughs> Chicago to the UK. You know, get some merch. My shirt is over there. I should put it on, but it's kind of cold in the house. I need to get a sweater. Yeah, that's on my list next. I'm going to grab me a little sweater out of there, man. I got to buy them, but just like y'all got to buy them. But anyway, uh, we also got the Discord as well. Discord plays a big part on Kick. This is HMP Prison Interview UK. Um, before this guy popped up on the screen, there was five seconds of his victim. There was, It was gory, so I'm not even going to waste my time to try to show it. I'm just gonna skip it and we'll get right into it right here. What's your name? Thomas Fraser. Where are you from? Bergenhout. And your conviction? 21 years EDS. What for them? Two section 18s, a stabbing, a lighting someone on fire, an arson, and an offensive weapon. All right, how long? Free the bros, but bro, you deserve to be there. You lit a human on fire. You need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't wish that on nobody, but you, you, they put you in the right spot, boy. What are you doing then? 21 EDS, so I've got to do 14 years to get me first parole. Okay, when did you come to prison? Are you a lad too? You scouse? And then when are you out? 2018, I started this sentence, and my conditional release date is 2044. Damn! Are you in a gang? No. Do you feel your sentence is too long? Yep. Ain't that attempted attempted unaliving? You lit a human being on fire. You feel like your sentence is too long. So what actually happened? Good question. The first, the first, the first thing was I let some kids stab me when I was on the out of the way. Stab me in the arm with a bottle there. Yeah. So I fucking got in the dress for him. I got in the dress for him. When I went round, let his gaff on fire. And his fucking dad's come running out the house and his dad was a big meathead. And it's one only a skinny kid, so I had to soak him and fucking blaze him in it. Did you have to soak Yeah, so that, 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 that was the first one. I had a Luther's aid stork bottle yeah. in my pocket full of petty, as well as the two milk bottles that I had full of petty. So I've chipped it out, I've chipped the petty through his window, yeah. blazed the house. I've been packing my bag made up with myself, little pat on my back for myself. I've turned the harness. The way that boy right there talking about this right now. He hasn't learned one lesson. You need all 44 of them years. All, however much, 2044, you need it all. I can tell on the way you talking, you have not learned your lesson. But I, I get it. You know what I'm saying? You wanted to spin the block on them. But that's the thing. Normally when something happens to you as a human being and you don't do, and you don't do something right then and there, you can't disguise it as self-defense anymore. It's not self-defense. You went back to the crib. You went home. You soaked in it. You thought about it. You got madder and madder. And you developed this plan. It's over with. <laughs> Some big meatheads there. So I've ran at him. And he's just started bingo on me all over That's the it. garden. Absolutely bingo on me. Don't oh, take right. me head off. So we just pulled the bottle out. Absolutely soaked him. And said, are you going to let me out of the garden? No, not even. No, one. fuck off. One fun with him. And then the second one, I've been on a night out for me mate's birthday. What? This is on a separate occasion? I'm on chance of some fat bird outside the weather spoons having a birthday. And some kids getting his fucking head punched in, so we all just like, you know, scrubbed it over to have a look at it. Mm -hmm. And we've had a look at it, and it's me mate on the floor now getting his head punched in, so I've hit one kid over the head with a bottle, and I've stuffed the rest of the bottle in his mate's face. And when I've pulled the bottle out of his face, I've pulled his eye out of his head as well. 
And so we've got a 17 and a half EDS for the stabbing. And what is EDS? Got a four and a half EDS for the arson. You got four and a half years for lighting somebody. I think you got off very, very light with that one. 17 years for helping your friend in a fight, though? That's a little... I mean, you did take it fully to the extreme. But as, as your story lets me know, you know you can't fight. But you're not, going, you're not running. You're standing turn toes down. I don't condone this violence, you do. I'm just here listening. And did these victims come to court and snitch on you? Yeah, yeah, prolifically. Prolifically him and his two mates turned up. His two mates had nothing to do with it, but when I was fighting with him, when I was fighting with him outside the, outside the fucking pub, one of his mates, who's apparently a school teacher, has picked his video up and started phoning it. Uh, started filming it. So he's got me fucking stabbing him on camera with the bottle and that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then they've turned up at court, yeah, all been crying their eyes out on the fucking stand and all this and all that. You want to read me transcripts, what I was saying to him? Like, I'm coming through and the kid's laughing at me face. Laughing in my face while I'm coming through to get sentenced, lad, yeah? So, the judge is giving it all, well, he's clearly terrified for his life. Free the lads. All this, his two mates got on the stand, they started crying and all. But keep bro in there. <laughs> all this and all that, and then as soon as I got convicted, you should have heard the round of applause around the fucking, around the, um, the courtroom, mate. Everyone was clapping. Yeah, personally, I went, I was fucking fuming, but... It's always the reaction that gets the punishment. Just remember that, man. When you out here and, and you outside, and somebody do something to you or do something to one of your homies, it's the you, they're not gonna get in trouble. It's the reaction that's gonna get in trouble because the reaction is gonna be harder than the original. You know what I'm saying? The original cause of it all. Give me a load of shit, so we're called on a slack. Is it true that? You took on this hit because you owed money to someone. And no, they put it down. They, they, they had to put it down to one or two reasons because apparently my family name has never been heard of by him, and I've never heard of his family name. So in other words, we didn't grass on each other. The fellow that all lit on fire, but they've put it down to you've either got to a donate on commission or you're criminally insane, and I've been ruled out as criminally insane. So they've put it down to as I've done it on commission. Which basically means I've been paid for it. Did you get paid for it? The fuck I wish. So what was it like to set somebody on fire, and how messy did it get? Do you know what it's like? It's scary seeing a full-grown man scream like that. Like I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I'll sit here and I won't tell you it was funny and all that and that, but they weren't at the time. Like it was half scary, you know. How old is this dude right now? He still looks. He looks young, but he also looked old at the same time. He an old young man. It was half scary seeing a full blown fella on fire crying his fucking eyes out running around. <laughs> it sounds funny now, that, but it's fucking not when you stood there in front of him and he's like, I'm old here. <laughs> How did you feel after? I felt like, I felt like a fucking macho man for about three hours until I got home and realised I'd burnt all my back and burnt my hand and then I didn't feel so big anymore. Oh, so you had injuries yourself? I had injuries, yeah. But they'd gone by the time I'd come to get questioned, because when I come to get questioned, he said to me, let me see your hand, because the fella told us he had hold of you for a while, so you must have had burn marks on you. They never checked me back, I had the burn on my back, but the burn on my hand had healed up by then. But they found a lighter at the scene, that's what got me nicked on that, I've dropped the fucking lighter at the scene. I get it. He's being interviewed by other prisoners, so he's still got to put up this this whole bravado act and things of that nature. But like, like I feel like he's this is not an act. Bro's still really like feeling himself about this. This is why you got so much time. It might have been too much, but they could probably see it in your your facial expressions, your the way you was carrying yourself in court. Like, this is why they put that time on you like that. I'm good, man. Thanks for asking. He said, from Google, an AED, I mean, an EDS, since it is made of a custodial element and a extended license element, this is very similar to a standard. Wait, why is this like this? Hold on.
the hell is like that for? Okay, bet. Okay, bet. Uh, Alright. How did the media betray you? Like a fucking, like, like, I mean, you, did, 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 uh, I've got me appeal there. You just put it down to like, like I've been running around the country causing all madness and that. No, because I've been nicked in two different areas and then I'm, I've now fixed the bold as well. So they just must be putting it down to, well, you're doing this here in Liverpool and then you're going out of town to Chester and doing that. How did the media betray you? Yeah. What was the saying about you in the papers? It's vile and fuck. Young, vile and fuck. Um, What was the exact words, I'm not even gonna hold you right there. That's a pretty accurate description from what I've heard. I can't even Thug, maybe not, but like young violent man for sure. Maybe you'll have to let me get you have to let me get a prince out or something. Yeah, it was just that the young thug and portraying yes. you as a pure scallion. And how did how did how do you feel about the media portraying you like that? Bollocks because they don't know me, they haven't got a clue who I am and they haven't got a clue I'm not gonna buy the sentence. Okay. Mainly the Liverpool echo, full of shit. If you could say something to your victim, what would you say? When I get out, I'm coming for your other eye, you cunt. <laughs> Bro, you're gonna be 50. If the parole board sees this, you're not, you're never. When I say never, I mean never seeing the light of day. Am I blurry? That's a promise. And do you regret the crimes you're in for? No. Crimes you've done at all? Uh, no, I regret. I regret the, the shit that's happened over it, like for, with my family and losing my family and all that, but I don't regret doing what I've done. I don't want to done for a reason. How did you know your victim? Uh, the second one I didn't, and the first one I didn't, and it was son. Were you and the victim on good terms? No, we weren't on any terms. Okay. What's the truth? What do you want to clear up? Uh, because there's a lot of stigma about your case, and everything that got said in court is not true, is it? Not all of it, anyway. Not everything, no. And did they make a lot Thanks of for asking that. I wouldn't say a lot. I mean, it, it's it's more the case details they've put down to shit. I wouldn't say so much, me, because they've betrayed me to be an asshole like I am. So, and you chopped someone, didn't you? So, what was the injuries to that? That was his eye. His eye gone. Removed his eyeball from his socket. And he literally came out. Literally no eye. I've got the picture there as well. Okay. Uh, I can show you pictures of that. I need that. Do you have a drug problem? Yeah. We've seen the... T we've seen the pictures before we started the video. It was too gruesome. So I decided not to even put them on YouTube. But he said, do you have a drug problem? Do you have a drug problem? Yeah. Okay. Expand. Uh, are you on the boats? Like, out, out, out there, the situation I was in out there? Out there, yeah. Yeah, out there, I was bad on the Charlie. I was bad on the Charlie and on the ale and I smoke. What'd you smoke? Crack? Spice. Yo, sp oh my god. Yo, yeah, 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 man. Uh, YNMA. Shout out to the Scousers, man. I'm an honorary Scouser, but th this one? Folks need to be in there. He need he need a rehab center. He might need the psych ward. The time he got is justified watching this. I ain't even gonna lie. I don't wish prison on nobody, but bro, you in there, you How do you survive in jail? Keep me honest on me that when I'm walking around. And how do you make money? <laughs> Ah, you wild, boy. Oh, that's funny. 
out there and in prison? Yeah, out there. I, I used to sell my weed and I was working on the bins. And in jail, I just fucking do what I can to get by. Okay. What do you do on an everyday basis? Call the shit. And literally 10 minutes ago, you got punched in the head, didn't you? Yeah. Tell me about that. For the bill that was meant to be paid weeks ago that I didn't pay. I can see that. I can see him getting picked on in prison. I can see it. I can see it. He did something out there in, in real life. Now you in there for real, for real. Not paying debts. You got punched in the forehead. Don't be careful. That ain't the last, buddy. When you done with this little interview. Why didn't you pay? Because I was just a fucking idiot there. You just got yourself into a bit of a rut that I couldn't get out of. You could say you're back up to your tricks. <laughs> you, could, you could put it like that way. Has the staff ever sorted you in prison? If they have exposed them? Yeah, D-Wing, S-O, fairest. I remember arguing with him, I was on D-Wing, this was sometime last year. And fairest, I've been arguing with him because they haven't let me out of my pads for three days to go on the yard. So I come to walk out and he said something to me. So he opens the door and I said, this is three fucking days I've been on this wing now and you keep forgetting to open me for the yard, but you don't forget to lock me up. So he grabbed me by the back of my neck and he threw me into my pad. So I smacked him in the face and then he's grabbed me by the back of the neck again, took me feet from underneath me and just started like trying to knee me head off and waylay me and that. The prison guards is in there grabbing you by the scruff of your neck like a little puppy? That's tough. That's illegal, isn't it? Yeah, that is illegal, yeah. So that's corruption. And, and then at the, at the time he had me wrapped up on the floor, who was then the SO on D Wing, I can't remember his name, he ran in and booted me in the face. Right, and sure. then and then decided to turn the body worn cam on afterwards. So the body worn cam doesn't even show the incident that happens, it only shows me wrapped up on the floor. Is that by any chance Officer Bradshaw, the big meathead? Officer Bradshaw is exactly who it is, yeah. And what prison was this in? This was in HMP Strangeways. Strangeways. Otherwise known as Strangeways. Strangeways. Okay. HMP Manchester. Manchester, okay. Wait. Um. Were you on Spice when this happened? Do you see yourself in five years? In jail? Buddy, <laughs> good question though. Fucking not the way I'm going, Dad. That's nice. Do you struggle with mental health or stress? Stress, yeah. What stress do you have? And what do you struggle with? Just He's in jail. So I've just left, I've got two kids, I've got, you know, I've, got a fucking, I've got an 11 year old kid who I don't really see. I've got another three year old kid. They were safe fucking once, once every couple of months if I'm lucky. Uh, just, just fine. I'm sorry, man. When I was in Chicago, once I had my daughter, anything negative that I was about to do, like, I had to think twice about it. Like, nah, because, <laughs> nah, I'm good. Because what if it don't, you know what I'm saying, pan out? Nah, I'm straight. I'm least the rest, that's it. That must be quite... Negative, I'm talking like, like, get into altercations, fights... Anything like I started walking away from a lot of stuff. Like, mm, it's not worth it. I know, I, I know, I can give you the flu flux if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna, you know. Painful. Yeah, shit. Do you get any help with mental health or stress? Not really, or drugs? No. Not, well, I take, I take drugs to try and relieve the stress. That doesn't help. And how much do you smoke a day? Varies, I suppose. Uh, for, for whatever well, you can get your hands on, I suppose. Yeah. Real high right now. Have you ever assaulted anyone? Yeah. Who? Who? On this sentence? Yeah. Uh, all up in here. Tell us about the time with the broomstick. With that screw. And you smashed it around his head. This was in Walton, this at the start of this sentence in HMP Liverpool. A screw by the name of Mr. Lanthium. I think he was new. I'd never seen him in Walton before, and I've been there a few times previous. Uh, Is there any documentaries on H and P Liverpool? That's the, honestly the first time he's. I knew there was a prison there, but like him saying it just confirmed it. He called, called, told me a dickhead or something one day, and I was, I, I was angry anyway. I'd seen me ass, so I stood at the corner of my pad. I was in a four-man dorm. 
And when he's come round the corner, my mates winked at me, so I've swung the brush and I fucking caught him right in the side of the head with it. So then the alarms went off, we all got banged up. And then they've come into the four man dorm of our seven screws and they've asked us all to get on our feet to leave the pad. So we've all got up one by one and gone to leave the pad. Now, I was the last to go to exit the pad and they've stopped me and said, no, not you, wait there. And then he's turned round, Mr. G, his name was, he was the SO at the time on Iwing. He now works at the block on the segregation unit in HMP Liverpool. He poked me to a side, he poked me off the bed and he said, um, what's this, you're in my officers with a brush? I said, yeah, well, your officer needs to learn how to speak to people properly. To which then he smacked me in the stomach and about six officers started having it with me. That was in 2019, HMP Liverpool, Iwing. Why did you do that? Why right. Why did you do that and expect no results? Like, expect nothing to happen to you? Did I do it? Why did he do that? I don't know, that's just the way a lot of officers are these days. A lot of officers, believe it or not, they should be here to help, but they're not here to help. They're here to give you a hard time to make themselves feel better. And do you think they assault prisoners because they know they can get away with it? Yeah, because they can get away with it. Because it's there where the gate stars and where the... I feel like well, the way I've been watching these prison documentaries, it's a give and take. Both of y'all give and take abuse. Prisoners and guards give and take abuse from each other. You know what I'm saying? Like verbal abuse. So... Social criminals of society, so who's going to take our word over a prison officer? And what do you think about corruption in HMP in Manchester? Disgusting. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <sighs> what do you hate the most about prison? The fact that the screws are here to open and close fucking doors, not give life advice, and we're here as a punishment, we're not here to be punished. What do you like the most about prison? Fucking hell, going to bed. <laughs> so what do you like the what most? What do you miss the most? Going to house. Pardon? Going to house, the pub. The pub. Do you have... You miss the pub, you don't miss your kids, you don't miss... <laughs> Vagium is nothing but the pub. Bro. You need one of them guards to give you life advice in there, man. You tripping, my boy. Have a support network that supports you. Do you mean like family ties, man? Not, not really, no, just my sister. Does anyone in the prison services support you in prison? Mm. So you're pretty much on your own? Yeah. Okay, well. That's the end of the interview. Thank you for your time. This is literally a D-I-C-K-H-E-A-D. Literally. Ah, <laughs> uh, this guy is... Okay. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. I am gone.